Good evening. This is the uh, Sunderland Board of Health. Uh, we're going to open the meeting at 6 and 7. Uh, this is a continuation of the July 20th meeting. Today is July 23rd. Um, in attendance, uh, once again, per uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The Town of Sunderland's Board of Health meeting tonight will be conducted via remote participation. Uh, tonight it is via Zoom. Uh, in attendance is, uh, I'm Caitlin Rock, the chair of the Board of Health. Uh, Bruce Bennett, member of the Board of Health, uh, is present. And Ken Kushai, member of the Board of Health, is present. Uh, Cynthia Bennett, the um, administrator for the Board of Health is present, as well as Judith Neely and Stephen Hall, the health agent. Tonight's uh, appointments, uh, attorney Peter Irvine is present. Uh, I believe also Mr. and Mrs. Lamoureux, resident uh -huh. that own 75 Russell Street are present, as well as Allegra G. Uh, Gio Vine and Christopher Boone. Uh, it's just me, Chris Boone. Okay, just Christopher Boone. And they are the prospective buyers of 75 Russell Street, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we had extensive technical difficulties on Monday. Um, and we'll cut off during discussions regarding um the uh the order to correct violations at 75 russell street um which were um made on june 22nd 2020 after an inspection by housing inspector gina McNeely. they were answered by attorney irvine on june 29th and uh, which then led to the appointment here at the Board of Health meeting. Uh, there were several um, ideas around um, and what we, uh, I believe the last thing we were discussing before the complete and total breakdown of communication <laughs> on Monday was um, ways to uh, either mitigate um, the order to correct, uh, well, either to um, to figure out how we can get the fact that the septic system is approved for a three bedroom house, am I correct? Four. A four bedroom house. And essentially the flow required for a home office is I believe slightly higher than a four bedroom house. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over, and I know that um, Steve Ball, the uh, our inspector, did have conversation with Attorney Irvine um, in between these two meetings. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Steve right now. Uh, thank you. the The issue remains that the house is a four bedroom, and there's a detached office. Um, slash, which has also been used in a part as an apartment, and there are no flows for that space in the septic system. So, if it uh, if it remains a detached office, then the septic system flows would have to be increased by seventy five gallons per day. Can I speak to that? Yes. Well, I'd like to make three points. Um, the first is the fact that the premises is a four bedroom and uh, 
looking at the the way that's calculated under Title V, it's a four bedroom, including the home office. Because it, as Gina pointed out during our last meeting, the calculation is based on the total number of rooms. And what this house has is there are three bedrooms on the second floor. Then there are either four or five rooms on the first floor. And then there's the unit in the garage. That's a total of either eight or nine habitable rooms. We divide that by half and round down and we get four bedrooms. So under the formula in Title V, it's a four bedroom house. It's in compliance. We don't have a problem. That's my first point. My second point is that uh, under Title V, a uh, home office does not require additional flood. Um, in CMR 15.2032 defines that and says home office, uh, you don't need additional flow for the purpose of designing this. And this has to be a home office and not a third party rentable office because of the zoning. Under the zoning code, Article 25B, uh, there is allowed use of this space as a home office for resident, but only a resident. Prohibits renting. <clears throat> as an office to non-residents. The garage is attached to the rest of the building. <clears throat> the zoning is real residential. It allows for home-based businesses, but it does not allow for third-party office use. So uh, this can only be a home office. It cannot be rented out to someone else. And the board can't put the homeowners in a position of trying to regulate this that such that it would require the additional flows that a third party office would require. A third party office would require that additional 75 gallon per day flow. But this cannot be a third party office. This can only be a home office. Um, I did some uh, research on this and found the, the only reported case law decision I could find on this is from 1999 where a homeowner sued a city to be allowed to use a home office and won the case at trial. Uh, some issues were appealed and the appeals court talked about it and said that, yes, as long as it's an accessory use, such as a home office, where the principal use is as a residence, then yes, you can use it as a home office. But the corollary of that is that you can't rent it out to a third party and make it a third party office. So if you wanna use it as a home office, you gotta live there, which is exactly what's gonna happen here. My third point is the actual use of the system. So I understand the concern of the board about making sure the septic system has the right capacity. And as I've just been saying, it's four bedroom, we've got the requisite capacity for four bedroom. Then if you look at the actual use that's happened, um, according to the passing Title V report that was obtained a few weeks ago, the actual average use has been 146 gallons per day during the past year. Capacity is 440. What we need for four bedrooms is 440, but it's only using 146. So the actual use is well within the limits. So it makes sense that this should all work. Now the original violation, the essence of that violation was you got a tenant in there, you cannot rent this space out to a tenant. That's understood now, the tenant's gone. The owners, current owners have been educated about that and the future owners have been educated about that. The future owners are saying, yeah, we totally get that. We're not gonna rent this out to anyone. They've put that in writing. They wanna use the space as a home office, not as rentable space to a third party. The current system is adequate for that. It's been demonstrated to be adequate for that. The public health is being protected. This, this space is already up to code, so we don't, need to find a different solution. And I ask you to take a vote on that basis and withdraw the violation. So I understand your take on it. I'm going to then go back over to Gina. Now, the, the count of the rooms is it the count of the rooms 
the septic system, it counts as four bedrooms. Does the septic system fall under that count of the four bedrooms? The, I'm not sure about the question. I mean, it, it has been advertised for sale as a four bedroom house. Right. But um, what, what he's saying is if you count all the rooms mm -hmm. and it, it, it still falls with that office as a fall, including the office, it falls as a four bedroom load on the septic system. I disagree. I, I think that first of all, I prefer to defer to Steve because he's handling the title five for Sunderland, but there's no question that this is a four bedroom house with a detached garage with an office slash apartment above. That's my take. Yeah. I've never been on site. So Steve, what do you, how do you? Uh, when I walked through the house as part of the title five inspection counting bedrooms, it was very clearly a four bedroom house. The counting the number of rooms and um, dividing by two and rounding down is only for when you have eight rooms or more. And that still doesn't preclude having four bedrooms in a seven room house. So this is clearly a four bedroom house. Uh, the other point is that um, design flows for residential and commercial properties are based on the number of bedrooms or the square footage of the office space looking at daily water use and uh, determining a septic system is adequate based on daily water use is only allowable in schools. Okay. So you, that, you, you just, I think you just agreed with, with me that it's a four bedroom house. The four bedroom house with a detached office. Detached. But, okay. The garage is detached. It is detached because it's all one structure. Secondly, where in the code does it talk about anything being detached? And third, let's go back to that formula in Title V about you take the total number of rooms, you divide in half, and you round down. So whether it's eight rooms or nine rooms, you still end up at four. That's okay, how is the garage attached? By a, there's a breezeway in between the garage and the house, a covered breezeway. Oh, right, but that's not, a, that's, that's not attached. Yes, yes, it is. It's, it's, it's attached, attached to the house. It's attached to the house. It's attached to the, the garage. It's is physically attached. attached to the house. Yes. But not with walls and a floor. No, it's, there's a, it's a concrete floor and it's uh, a, a, roof a roof on it and it's attached to the garage and the, the house by, by the covered breezeway and concrete floor. Every definition of attachment is attached to the house. Now, if it was an insurance, that is an attachment to the house. And I'm an appraiser, it's attached. If you look that at would be attached to the house. If you look at the listing that I circulated before Monday, there's a picture of the house. And uh, you can see that there's, the breezeway is roofed and uh, connects from the main house to the garage. Okay. All right, I, yeah, I can kind of see it. Okay. Caitlin, can I say something? You sure can. As I look at, I have to agree with Steve and Gina on this. At the time of the Title V inspection, which is what we have to look at, that was being used as an apartment. It makes it a four bedroom house with an apartment with a bedroom. Mm -hmm. The only way to eliminate for, for the future or for whatever is to remove the bathroom there so it doesn't become a living space with a bathroom. And I don't see any other way because in the past, this has been an apartment, it's been an office, it's been whatever. In the future, even if we remove a wall upstairs, that wall can be put back. If we say, okay, it's a detached office with, with, with a bathroom, that can become an apartment in the future not only for the present owners, the future owners, but if the future owners sell it in two, three, four years, which we don't know, it could still become an apartment again. And, you know, this was done against the zoning bylaws 
is making it an apartment. And so I think the only way to solve the problem is to remove the, the bathroom so it can, cannot be used as a living space again. Well, according to that logic, you can put a bathroom back in after it's removed and have the same thing happen. You're going on the assumption that's going to happen. You don't know that. Yes. You, and also, if, they, if, if they go back and they get a, uh, if you're going to put a bathroom back in there, you have to pull a plumbing permit to get a bathroom in there. And then that will become. Peter, do you want to address this as far as the relevancy as of what it was used for in, in the it past? It was an office. Here's the thing, though. It was rented out to people. to go with what the knowledge is that we have. Now, I discussed this with my, one of my inspectors the other day. We have to go with what we know. And if we know and we believe that we have something that's in violation of the code, we have to act on that. And so we can't, we can't say that, you know, we're going to let this go because what's going to happen is this is going to come right back in our lap the next time this house gets sold. We have acted on it. Gina issued a violation that brought the awareness that, oh, this cannot be used as an apartment. So, And then that the triggered thing. the Title V saying mm -hmm. that it's not, the, the flow is not proper for it being four used. Four bedroom it is, it is proper. <laughs> for a four bedroom, it's proper. This, but we, we do not agree. Well, Steve. how would you give me a definition of the flow then on a four bedroom? Steve? How is it not a four bedroom? So, okay, the definition that you're using for total bedrooms for single family homes, when the total number of rooms for a single family home exceeds eight, then you can calculate the number of bedrooms by de counting, dividing by two and rounding down. This is not the case. This is a seven room house. It is a nine. Four, the property record card listed as seven. That's because you didn't. They didn't reference it correctly to begin with. When they do, well, I didn't fill out the property reference cards. Someone else did, and it's nine rooms. Okay, so if it's nine rooms, it still is four bedrooms. Yeah, and it still has a detached apartment slash. It doesn't have a detached. It's, it's it not is. a detached apartment. Okay, pardon. It's, it was illegal, so we. It doesn't have an egress. It has nothing, so we used it as an office for many, many, many years, and it is now. You know, when when Gina came up with the doesn't have a second egress, and obviously doesn't have an oven in it either. We eliminated all that and and went by the code. It was our mistake. I agree. It was our mistake. We shouldn't have done that. We misinterpreted. And we, we thought that if it wasn't had, didn't have an oven, that we were okay. We didn't realize that, you know, that that wasn't the case. So we did make an error and we apologize for that. But it is going to be and is now used as, it's just a vacant space right now. But the property owners that are buying it want it just as a home office. That's what they're going to use it for. And they said they would sign something to say they would never use it anything but a home office. I still don't understand how this can be anything more than a four bedroom. You're saying that if, if it was, if you considered it to have seven rooms, then it's going to be more than four bedrooms. Yet if it has nine rooms, it's four bedroom. How can it have more than four bedrooms unless there are more, there are ten or more rooms? It does not make any logical sense. The house is for sale. It's a four bedroom house. Yes, it yeah. is. That's well, true. Everybody wants a four bedroom when they're selling and a three bedroom when they're upgrading a septic system to save money. But it's it's a four bedroom house. It's never been in dispute. No, sorry, Steve. It's four bedrooms. It's four yeah, bedrooms. It's four bedrooms. It, it has an office that has a separate entrance, can be rented to a third party. Um, As I guess, no, no, it, no, it can't, can't be. Under the zoning code, you cannot rent this out to someone else. Well, well, clearly somebody thought the zoning code didn't apply because they had turned it into an and apartment. And we apologize for that. I said we didn't know. We thought an oven was the, the, the big difference. But... 
we've used it for an office for many, 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 many years. I mean, that's all I used it for when we lived there. It was always an office, always an office for when, for me personally, I'm an appraiser and I used to use it upstairs. We need to go with the state of the premises as it is right now. You can't, try to make up rules about things that might happen in the future. I mean, that's like if you said, well, you got to put in a sprinkler system because someday someone might shoot off some fireworks inside the house. And that's, we could make up all sorts of things about what might happen in the future. We've got to look at what's the code and where is it at right now? They did the premise when that title five was done, but the inspection was made was a four bedroom house with an apartment up above. Not an no. apartment. It, it, was, it was a living space with being rented out as an apartment. Okay? It was used that as was, an office for 25 years at least. And yet, the time of the Title V, and like your attorney said, we have to look at the present time and what it was. And, and what it's it an is. Yeah, apartment. The present time, it's empty. <laughs> but that's not when the Title V was done. Well, they, right. Well, but you can't go have it both ways. And Gina also no, told no, us it no. was illegal. We can't, we can't go back in time. We can't go forward in time. It's so I mean, presently a on that bedroom day. house with an attached garage with a room over it. Can we move the meeting on, Caitlin, and uh, yes. close the hearing and have a vote on this? Yes. All right. What we're going to do, um, so with regard to the order to correct, because we've corrected all the violations, all the violations that Gina pointed out, I have been corrected. The plumbing pipes were completely removed from the kitchenette. No, and no, because we. Oh, you know, the plumbing is in the you go to address this meter and capped off. No. Okay, the propane tank shall be properly abandoned and removed from the side of the garage. That's for, that's for the house. That's for the main house for cooking. Okay, well, you just said you corrected everything. All right, we can have that move tomorrow if we have to. I, I'm just, I, I just asked a question. What's I'm, the violation I'm, on the propane tank? What code? It's an, it's an observation that someone is living upstairs. And there's also a the, the propane, propane tank, tank is for cooking for the main house, so it has nothing to do with the upstairs. Why do you have two? And why does the copper one is for one the hot water heater and one's one hot. is for cooking? Yeah, one's a cooking propane and the other one's a hot water tank. Okay. Heater. Propane. Propane tank on the side of the house near the bulkhead. And yeah. on the side of the house by the garage is the cooking fuel for the main house. We have a gas stove. That's what that's for. Through the garage. And and that, that's the way they, that's that's where they, they did it. Yeah, that, and they have pipe in the underneath that goes under the ground. And, and up the deck, up and you the, can see where it goes into the, the house. It goes the right house. into the house from there. But that's for the main house. It's not for the bonus room apartment. Okay. Office, whatever they want to call it. Okay. Um, but I understand the violations. And Gina, we did correct those as far as, you know, the egress and all that. We took everything out of there. Uh, as far as the tenant and everything else, but anyway. okay, that was the that was like the the very first thing that we um that that was what uh, attorney Irvine was asking for the hearing regarding the order to correct violations. So the only issue then is the plumbing pipes completely removed from the kitchenette and bathroom and the plumbing emanating from the garage shall be dismantled and capped off. So that is the item still left to be discussed. But I understand that if you have an office space, you can have a bathroom. And I talked to Tom about that. He said, no, that's fine. As long as you have an, as an office space and not a rental. Tom's oh, the building inspector. Okay. And the bill, then now he, this is the issue though. Um, when that, when that office bonus room, whatever was put in, were there plumbing permits? Yes, 1987. Every, Danny pulled, Danny Majewski was the contractor. He pulled everything and the building inspector came over and was up there and looked and so wasn't Mary Ann Kowalik 
everyone saw that and they said, don't put an oven in. That was our biggest thing. Do not put an oven in this space. That was the, the violation back then. You couldn't do that, which we never did. And we went to two meetings on the, for the for plans and everything else. It was architecturally drawn up. Everything was approved. And the Title V was done in 2007 by Doug from Conway. I can't remember his last name, but with an engineer. And it was approved again that, time. that everything was okay for what we had for the rooms. And I believe Mary Ellen, I know Mary Ellen was, Kowalik was at our house a couple of times. And she saw everything. And everything was approved at that point for the, for the Title V. Do we have Mike the plans? Went. Do we have the plans that were approved for that Title V? Title five? Yes, Steve? the Title V plans you have. We, we have the Title V plans. Yes. The, uh, it, the, the plans listed as a four bedroom house. Yeah. Uh, and the design flow is for a four bedroom house. And there is no mention of an office and incorporating design flows from an office. There's no mention of anything over the garage, any living space, any bonus space, nothing. Nope, nope. Nothing. It was there when it was built in 1987. That's not the point. Oh, well, the point again, if is, the description is incorrect, it's not our fault. Uh, no, well, you're left if holding the back. description That's on the card is okay, the, listen, I didn't draw it that way. Talking? Could you please stop talking? All right. Here's the problem. This is the problem. No matter what happens, you got the benefit, okay? The Title V was approved, that, and it did not include that room. So you get this benefit for a numerous amount of years because you didn't have to pay for that type, that, uh, the system. The problem is, is when you go to sell. It's kind of like when you don't disclose on your insurance something, you don't have to pay, pay, pay the premium for 20 years, but you have a fire and you find out you're not covered. You got the rent for not paying for 20 years, but you don't get the payout. Well, this is the problem. But the office, you don't need extra flow for the office. So there was no need to ever mention it on a report. You don't know. I don't agree with that because I, you don't, we don't have the benefit of giving the engineer and the inspector the full knowledge of what was up there at the time of the Title V. And that's, you can't do that. You can't have an engineer generate plans without knowing what's up there. And then years later say, uh, you know, when, when someone else says, no, that requires X, you say no. Caitlin, can I make a motion? Yeah. I would like to make a motion to enforce the order that the uh, health inspector and the uh, Steve Ball gave on the date of the Title V inspection. And to be precise, that would be to enforce item number one. Which is to disconnect the plumbing completely. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I think Mr. Boone would like to uh, make a proposal about um, a potential remedy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, as you know, it's just going to be me and my wife living there. Um, your concern about us selling the house in the future. Um, I, I, I note that. Um, so, I, you know, we would be willing to, um, it seems like it's common to adopt deed restrictions in situations like this. And so if we've decided for some reason that the office has to count towards the total flow, if we just said that the main house, excluding the garage, is a three bedroom house, then you would have a three bedroom plus an office 
the septic tank can handle that capacity. A deed restriction would bind us. It would also bind us when we advertise the house, selling it to the next people, and it would bind the next people. So I would be con like, if you remove the bathroom, you're going to jam up the sale. If I would be happy to adopt a deed restriction that's binding on us and the next people. Alternatively, if the deed restriction doesn't work and we can do something like combine two bedrooms into one so that it's literally, we're talking about a house that, you know, a main structure that has seven rooms. So this is calling it a three bedroom house, either in the deed or by combining two of the tiny bedrooms, we would be okay with either of those things. And that, you know, like the reason we count the bedrooms for the flow rate is because it's, you know, the number of people living there is what determines this. It's going to be two of us. You, you talked about you don't do the divide by two thing when it's eight or less. That's correct. But then you go by the definition of what's a bedroom and it's based on the intended use. That's what it says in the statute. We do not intend to sleep in four different rooms. One of them will clearly be a study. Only one of them will be a bedroom. So I am very happy to just call this a three bedroom house plus an office. The septic tank has you know, enough capacity to deal with that. If there's a way to do that, that we would be happy and we'd be happy to have it such that it's binding on, you know, when we put the house up for sale. And to be clear that <clears throat> that second proposal he's talking about, um, we looked at the property and there's a way where a, um, one of the bedrooms on the second floor could be combined with the bathroom, thus eliminating a room on the second floor. If they're going to eliminate a bedroom on the second floor, absolutely. Then that, can turns, that. that absolutely turn, takes a bedroom away. Okay. That is we not a problem that. at all. Yeah. Okay. So, Bruce, would you agree with that? I have difficulty agreeing with that. If the bedroom's going to be removed, yeah. I don't see why the plumbing can't be removed also. Well, because, let's because wait a minute, let me, let me finish, right, please, sorry, let me please, okay? Yeah. Every office space that I've ever seen or I've ever worked, unless you're a high-level executive, if you have to go to the bathroom, you can walk out your office and go down the hall and use the bathroom. And I don't see what the issue is. To me, the issue is the bathroom staying there, and even with the deed restrictions, that's, to me, that's not acceptable. But that's me. I'm one vote. But but here the issue is is if if they move if they remove the the room legally they're within the law. Then let them remove the room before the sale goes through. Yes. Okay. And yep. then have another Title Five inspection done then because the Title Five inspection is done on the day that the Title Five is done in the conditions that exist when it's done. And I don't think we can go back. Would that, would that be, Steve? Can you comment uh, on that? that? That's the way it's all has been interpreted. So um, the other thing is uh, there's a place on North Plain Road that uh, originally was designed for three bedrooms. And when we did the Title V inspection, it magically had four bedrooms. No permits had ever been pulled. And so... The septic system had to be upgraded at the time. So, I mean, this is this is not an unusual problem. It's not to malign any particular person to say that you're untrustworthy. But during a Title V inspection, you have to look at the potential use of the rooms, not what the what the owner plans to use them for. Um, you have to look at what somebody, the next person down the line or the previous person was using them for. Hmm. Okay. So am I, just want to make this clear. So on the second floor of the house, there's currently three bedrooms <clears throat> and a bathroom, actually two bathrooms, sorry. So if we take out a wall between one of those bathrooms and one of the bedrooms, make it a giant bathroom, and we don't touch the garage or the space above the garage, we redo the Title V, that would satisfy the board. Is that correct? It would meet the bedroom number, yes. Is, is yeah. that agreeable with you, Steve? Uh, that, would, that would meet that. Um, I still think there's an issue with the appliances above the 
No. Uh, the garage. I mean, you still end up with a uh, kitchenette above there, which, uh, along with a shower, and uh, you're still meeting the definitions, or not necessarily the definitions, but an intent of a space that can be used independent of the rest of the house. So you're saying you're concerned about the kitchenette and um, the fact that I'm just looking for a picture of that. I'll, I believe I'll it has a sink. It doesn't, it doesn't have a, an oven still. It's got a sink in it. It's in a small refrigerator. Yeah, like a mini bar or fridge. Yeah, a mini, mini fridge. And a cooktop? Does it have a cooktop? There's a burner, one burner, but there's no oven. And there's no appliances out, out, up there either, other appliances. So you're saying that <clears throat> this idea would would be acceptable, but only if those the kitchenette pieces were also removed. Is that right, Steve? Uh, I would defer to Gina since she is the uh, hired specifically to do housing, and uh, and she knows the code much better than I do on that. But I think that. Uh, an office, sure, it has a toilet and a sink, but it doesn't have a shower, it doesn't have a cooktop, it doesn't have all of the rest. I mean, you're, you're stretching the definition of an office with all of the plumbing in there. Well, uh, we seem to be sliding down a slippery slope here. I mean, a few minutes ago, the kitchenette wasn't a problem. And then suddenly the kitchenette's a problem because of, I guess, the sink and the fridge. But now you're also saying that the shower is a problem. So I'm trying to define where the line is here. I thought the shower was totally fine. Or are we back to Gina? Well, you know, if it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. And you have a, a full bathroom, shower, full bathroom, and a kitchenette. I think it really does press the limits of an office. Certainly, I would say the kitchenette should be removed completely okay. um, if this is going to be an office. Yeah. Peter, let's look at what we've got here, okay? It was constructed as an apartment. I, I, no matter what they say, it was constructed as an apartment. Nobody puts a burner. Nobody, it was, and, and they were given the advice of don't put an oven in to get around the law. In and the 1980s. Okay, yeah, I don't care when. So it was constructed as an illegal apartment for some extra income. Stop. That's what it was. And when we got there, that's what it was being used as. So, that's what we got. Those are the facts. Now we have, oh, it'll never, we're, we're sorry, we made a mistake, even though she's an appraiser. We made a mistake, we're so sorry, it'll never happen again, blah, 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 we promise, we swear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what we're dealing with. We've got Title V and we have housing concerns. We've got two lines here. Can we fix the Title V? Yeah, fix the bedrooms number. Now, we, can we fix the housing? Yeah, take out the burner. Okay. Take out anything that looks like an apartment. Okay? I, you, know, I, you know, everyone here is pussyfooting around. We're not accusing, we're not accusing. I, you know what? Maybe I was a prosecutor for too many damn years. They knew exactly what they were doing. They did it. Whether they benefited from it or not, that's okay, I don't care. I don't care about any of that. We're here now with what we have. Where do we go from there? 
make it not look like an apartment anymore, and we deal with the Title V, and we can move on. Okay, so how about the, the kitchenette pieces go? It's one piece. It's one unit. Great. Pull it out. A sink thingy with a fridge thing. Pull that out. Caitlin, Pull that out. Caitlin, Caitlin is a motion on the floor. The shower stays. All right. Do you want to second the motion, Ken? The motion is to enforce item one to completely remove the kitchenette and bathroom. The plumbing emanating from the garage shall be dismantled and capped off. I am not seconding it. I think that there is another way to remedy this. Ken, you are more than welcome to second it and we'll put it to vote. Um, well, I'm, I'm, because I'm, I've got my hearing aids in, but I'm, sometimes I'm picking you up and sometimes I'm not. So you're saying, uh, if I got this right, um, hearing right, you want to eliminate the kitchenette well, and the bathroom? No, Bruce no. Put a, made a motion to yep. enforce Gina's order to correct violations. The one that's still outstanding is number one. Yes. Plumbing pipes shall be completely removed from the kitchenette and bathroom. The plumbing emanating from the garage shall be dismantled and capped off. Do you want to put that to a vote? Um, well, my, th my thoughts were, um, somebody said about the shower. Is there a shower there? Yes. No, yes. Yes, there is. Well, um, um, my stumbling point is uh, on eliminate the shower. Okay. And as far as I'm... The, so what you're saying the, is you don't want everything taken out, so you do not want to vote on this. You don't believe that the entire order to correct should be... Well, I'm kind of torn. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd say I'd vote yes. To, uh, to, to uh, I'll second the vote to move okay, so remove everything. Let's have a vote. Uh, all in favor of uh, enforcing Gina's order to correct violation number one, say aye. 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 All right. Two to enough. Two. Then nay. Nay. Two to one. So um, the Board of Health has voted to um, enforce the order to correct dated June 22nd that the plumbing pipe shall be completely removed from the kitchenette and bathroom. The plumbing emanating from the garage shall be dismantled and capped off. Um, if you would like to um, uh, file something in court. Yes. Okay. 30A. Yep. So, uh, but as of today's date, June 23rd, um, we have voted to uh, July 23rd, excuse me, at uh, 650, we have voted to enforce the order to correct violations. How do I uh, obtain copies of the recordings? Um, it, they will be uploaded at the end of this meeting. Okay. And um, we, I can, Cindy, are you on? Yes, I am. Sorry. Uh, uh, Attorney Irvine would like a copy of the recording. They're available on YouTube when you put it up. It goes, doesn't it go to Chris? Collins first and then it goes up yeah it, it has to go to the they have to get, do something edit something with it and then not edit it but whatever they do put it in the right format they have to put it in the right format uh, the FCAT Franklin Community Access Television and then it gets uploaded but um, I will check with Cindy and we'll make sure we will figure out how yeah, to I'll send it. I can send the link when it gets uploaded because they'll let me know when it's up okay Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to approving the minutes 
of June 22nd. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Bruce? You're Aye. Ready? Thank you. Three to zero. The minutes are approved. Um, old business online permitting. Um, Cindy uh, spoke with the online permitting vendor on the dates cut off. Uh, was it last week, Cindy? You spoke? It was last week. Can you okay. can you take us out? We don't need to hear this. I'll just get out of it. Yeah, anyone can just um, leave the meeting. There should be something on the Zoom account that says leave meeting. Thank you for your trying to get this solved. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, so briefly, he um, he doesn't really seem interested in moving along, and he just kept insisting that the Board of Health uh, module was very different than the other formats for the other inspectors. I don't see where the difference is, but he says they are. It would be ten to $15,000 to buy the software, and then a $2,500 a year approximately for the maintenance. So I said, okay, we're good. Thank you. And I had been working with some other towns, had been calling because they knew we were using point for other inspectors. And so we're all gonna start looking for something else because we're all the same size, smaller towns and can't afford stuff like that. So I was a little um, disappointed that he was so dismissive, um, but I think uh, they're overwhelmed with bigger accounts and we're just not important enough, so. Well, I don't understand why are, so the pl the plumbing, the electrical, everybody mm -hmm. else, the building, they don't have to spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars extra. No, because it was sold to us that they could um, increase their fees. That ten dollar fee, which would accommodate um, the the charge for that, because the inspection model apparently is different than what the um, the board of health module is. I don't know how it's different. If he says, well, they have forms and stuff. Well, we do too. <laughs> um, and it, they just kept insisting it was different all along. He was supposed to send me the module so I could look at it because I think most of it doesn't apply to us because we don't do public health nursing services and all that sort of thing. And, um, he, he just was not, he was very dismissive and not interested in moving forward. So 10, $10 of every inspector fee goes to them. Um, they're not happy because they're not getting the volume that we had said we had, but then COVID happened and they took us five months to get us online. So that we were supposed to be online in July, didn't get online until Thanksgiving. Nobody's building over the winter and all that stuff. So it's, um, so I just told them, thank you, bye. That's, that's very frustrating. Okay. I was very frustrated with that. I wish he had told me that in January. Yeah, we could be. We could have looked for someone. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So we can so. get a different vendor that would still mesh with the other online permitting. No, no. So Point Software is um, our collection software that we use in the Treasure Collector's Office. Yeah. That's why that vendor was attractive to us because we could coordinate all of that, you know, with the reports. The treasure collector gets reports when fees are paid and so forth and so on. I don't see how we can't do that otherwise, but um, I'd also mentioned that the Board of Health is also an important component of a building permit. So he said, well, they'd have to be a, they'd have to get a user license for us. And then he didn't think there was enough room for another one. So I'm not sure how Tom and um, Steve coordinate all of that. I think it's just verbally. But again, I think uh, I think they they just aren't interested. So okay, wow. So then we'll it's just keep doing our stuff on paper. Well, currently, yeah. I, I currently um, we used to circulate a piece of paper with right. the Board of Health sign off on every permit. Yeah. We currently don't have that uh, due to the online permitting. So there's no 
I call up Tom and I discuss the the building permit with him, but there isn't the communication that we used to have and there isn't the paper trail. Um, well, before COVID hit, we were doing that still internally. So most of the people that would um, be looking for anything from the building inspector, that form would come to me and I would copy it and giving it out, give it out to the different departments, whoever was required, Board of Health, Treasure Collector, the conservation, driveway permits, whatever. And so we still continue to do some of that. Um, but then COVID hit, there hasn't been that much activity, although there really has. People are still digging for houses, they're building all sorts of things. And so I just don't know if there's situate, well, we did have a situation where somebody was calling us because they were trying to put a deck in and wanted to make sure it didn't interfere with the, um, with their septic. We didn't get that through the building department. That's the first one I've seen happen that way. So I, I don't know. I have to email the building inspector anyway about a couple of other things. So I think I'd like to talk to him about that, the coordination of those efforts. Cause that clearly isn't happening. All right, because this is potentially a problem. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, we can't be the only department not online. Well, you know. the highway's not online. Uh, it even had the potential for the select board's office to be online, um, you know, for the, all the permits that we do for different licenses and whatnot. And yeah. so we could have made it all work, but he's not interested in pursuing us. Cindy, so. Cindy yeah. can I ask a question? Is, sure. is the company that is you're dealing with or we're dealing, we were dealing with, is it like a one-man, two-man company? I don't believe so. Um, Point Software has been around for a long time, and many account or charger collector's offices use it for their collection services. So I don't believe so. I think the region is large, um, and I think this online permitting for all these other things is – is moving faster than they expected. I know when it was sold to us, we were told all these other depart or other towns were on it. And come to find out none of them were live. They were using it for their internal records and systems, but they weren't actually having their their residents use it as a online building permit. What, what, do, we, what do other towns use larger than us that are live and online use for the health departments? Is there a company? I don't. I, uh, well, the larger towns usually have enough staff to internally do stuff. Um, I'm going to pursue that because I am interested in knowing most of them are doing things just like we are. Yeah. But they, you they know, prefer. if they're doing it online and they're larger, they got to have a vendor that's helping them and stuff like that. So I, you know, I think it's worth shopping around, seeing what we can figure out. For sure. I know like for a bigger place like Greenfield, they have a whole staff that does all of this. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they do all their physical work. I did know how they do it and they did it just like us. I don't know if they've moved to something else now or not. Hmm. So we are definitely going to pursue something else. It may all be the same cost range and we just can't afford it, but I'm willing to look. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Cindy. I appreciate it. Um, we'll move on to new business, housing health agent update. Hello. Hello. Um, you have my written Thank report. So all the trouble you caused. I really appreciate oh. it. Man, you're welcome. <laughs> it's tough to be in the Board of Health, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Worth every dime they pay us. Right? <laughs> so, um... Nothing too much to report. I'm going back to 28 South Silver Lane tomorrow morning to check out a couple of other violations there. I'm going out at nine. Um, 75 Russell, we just dealt with. 307 Montague Road, that's a family without the functioning toilet. Um, I have a call in, to, a second call into a contractor named um, Corey Corey Butler, who is supposedly has a signed contract with the owners of this condo to fix the floor. The floor gets 
gets fixed and the toilet can get in. But these people have not been honest with me, not the contractor, but the homeowners. So I need to, I have a call out waiting for confirmation of a So contract. this is that one last ditch effort before going to court? Yep. Okay. Yep. Can, uh, I, can I ask a question about that, Gina? Yes. It's, it's, th that floor is a concrete floor, correct? No, you know why? Because it's um, on the second story. The second floor is where oh, the bathroom oh, oh. is. In, in what is it? The bathroom, the toilet's falling through? Yeah, the toilet apparently fell through some many months ago. Okay. Um, due to rotted floor. Okay. okay. It's an easy fix. Easy fix. I could have fixed it by now. With, yeah. You know, with my okay. Swiss Army knife, I could have fixed it by now. So okay. hopefully it'll move forward. Um, no. What what have they been using since that happened? Yeah. Um, as my report reflected, when I did go out there, they're using um, a campy potty. It's a under fifty dollar item. It's something you'd see in a camper, um, a low level camper, not a not a higher quality camper. Um, it, it's a chemical toilet. It's not a composting toilet by any means. It's chemical. And it, you know, it needs to be replaced with a. And, the, and the, does the stuff go down into the septic tank there, the septic system? Nope, it's self-contained, and they take it. They take the the bottom compartment out, and bring it to like Hatfield, one of the uh, RV places, which really. Do you really think they bring it to Hatfield? I do <laughs> think so. Um, because and, and the reason I do is because they're being so carefully watched by the neighbors. Oh. Hmm. Um, there was no odor, there were no flies, there was nothing untoward when I was there. And uh -huh. I wanted to give them time to fix it, but they, they haven't been forthcoming. Yeah. All right. That's it. Okay. Um, what else was there? Uh, because, well, the history, I, I know of the whole situation over there. And uh, when they, the sewer pipes uh, broke or cracked, I should say, not broke, but cracked from the other apartment next door, uh, they had to, and they, uh, they said to something about putting the toilet back on. The guy looked at him and says, no, I, I can't legally do that at the time because the floors were so bad. He said, I can't legally put that toilet back in place. Mm. Yeah, with the yeah. Floor, those have to be repaired before that a toilet can be set there. So that's so that's the okay. story on that one. Well, thank you very much. Keep us updated. Okay. Yes, um, please. Steve. Uh, well, the that's it, right, Gina? Hmm? That was it, right? I didn't mean yeah, to. Yeah, I'm chasing a fly around my head. A okay. <laughs> I was, that must be the one that was here or it's gone now. Uh, so septic systems are picking up with some installations in Title Fives. I've done several of those since the, the last meeting. The, I've been fielding uh, quite a number of complaints um, about mask wearing. You know, people... Uh, uh, so I go and, uh, you know, I've been to the corner store, I've been to the spirit shop, I've gone uh, several places, and my standard procedure is to give them copies of the orders for masks, um, you know, all of the FAQs and guidance for wearing it and saying, you know, this is, uh, this is what's required. Um, a few times I've had to tell them that it's not the interesting thing about science is that it doesn't care what you believe you need to do this. Um, and then there have been some pretty creative solutions that I've looked at. Uh, Goten has made movable barriers so they can sit people at, uh, at their tables. And so they call me to come look at those and approve that. So the, so that's doing good. The, the owner of the, the O's um, is uh, 
well, he hasn't accused me of un being of un unresponsive yet. Uh, I'm still well, telling him. He did. He kind of yeah. did. He kind of said it took you a whole month to answer, and you didn't give him an answer. Well, so, I did. I gave him an answer when we talked on the phone. I gave yeah. him an answer in writing, and I he gave him like the it. same. He didn't like it. So he did not like it. So basically, I I've told him that he is. Uh, by definition, under the code, he's not a food establishment. Yeah. And that the way, you know, his solution is to apply to become a food establishment. He didn't want to do can, that. Yeah, he doesn't want to do that. It doesn't help that, you know, places like the Hot Al Warren are I know. selling. Although it does help that yesterday's Hampshire Gazette front page above the fold was the state cro closed down a brewery in Florence. It was basically selling popcorn, saying they were a restaurant. So it's it's articles like that that make our job easier. Yeah. Well, I noticed the tavern, the tavern in Deerfield. It's right in the center, right next to the, um, it's right at the cross streets in Deerfield. Uh -huh. Leo's table? The, what? Leo's table? No, next door. Right next, next, door. door. Oh, okay, next door. Oh, next door. That's yep. closed. Oh. So, and that's been closed. Every time I've gone by, it's been closed. Uh -huh. I think so that we, might have closed before this, uh, Caitlin. Oh, yeah? Uh, uh, I, I think it might have, yeah. I'm not sure. He's claiming, you know, everything's open, all the dirty bars in Deerfield. <laughs> but yeah. I don't, I mean, you know, and I'm sorry we don't operate like Deerfield, but. No, the. the I, I have to agree with this COVID thing. I mean, the mask thing, you know, people do forget their mask. Um, what's the penalty for patrons that are visiting these places, Steve, that don't wear a mask? Um, is, is there a penalty? And who's supposed to enforce that? So there is a penalty. I don't know if um, that's enforceable by the Board of Health. It is. It's also uh, enforceable by the police department that has been designated as agents of the Board of Health for exactly this purpose. I don't know if the penalty is assessed to the patron or to the owner. Okay. Uh, no, it um, can be assessed to both. Okay. And it's actually the Board of Health who can assess it. We deputized the police as agents of the Board of Health. Right. Um, so now they can enforce it. It's $300, mm -hmm. but we don't, our goal is not to do that, especially if people forget, you know, it, you, but if they dig in, we still, the police chief and I really had a long talk <laughs> and they carry them with them. They do a lot of community education. They do a lot especially some of the people that don't have them or don't wear them can't, could never in a million years afford 300 bucks. Some people, <clears throat> Steve, um, are just either, it just, I, I can't, um, are, are having a hard time doing it. And I'm having a hard time not assessing him $300 every time I see him. I walk oh. out and I call Steve. I walk out of his place of business because he's the only person not wearing a mask. And he is the owner. And I call Steve and Steve deals with it because I'm going to throw something at his head. Because <laughs> approach. You know what I mean? You're a leader and you need to lead. So I'm having an issue with him personally. <laughs> but um, we, it, it's got to be through education and through, you know, um, but if someone is really getting uh, pushed back, we can issue the $300. I'm just afraid that this could escalate with some people very quickly and very rapidly and, and bad things could happen. And I definitely don't want to see that happen. Which is why none of us... I think, I think we should take an approach that's more community-oriented, education-oriented. No. Because I no, don't I want to see someone get hurt on that. Absolutely, which is why no, not can... to do it. I always call Steve, and Steve just talks to everybody. He doesn't. And the uh, police chief is well, very open to any phone call going to him. Um, and his officers have 
a lot of community training about this. They are deflect, defer, you know, bring it down. And um, we talked about if, if a business owner calls him, calls the police, they know what to do. So. The, the, um, I can talk to that because uh, we, they were sworn in, the police department was sworn in as Board of Health agents temporarily during this coronavirus death stuff because they, they're trained to de-escalate to start with. Yes. And go from there. Yes. Because the, they're worried about if a st shop owner calls them. Because, right. I mean, there was somebody shot in a Walmart. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. The other thing that I, I talked to the owners about of face mask wearing is I'll mention to them that, yes, there is a $300 fine. We're loath to actually find somebody because one, it's appealable and they can tie that up for ever in court appealing the fine. But there is a provision in the food code where we can just close their establishment, which is not appealable to the court system. And, you know, I, they don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And it's, you know, we're being kind of silly over something that really you should be wearing a mask. So, so far I've been successful with one pretty notable exception, but we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I want to try to get this meeting. Um, okay, public health nurse, public health nurse update, COVID-19. He emailed in that there are no active infection cases since May in our town. Nice. Um, she is currently, yeah, she's currently being consulted by Frontier, the Frontier Nurse Manager uh, regarding COVID protocols for all the schools when they open. Uh, you know, like what to do if a kid gets sick, you know, how to, how to do all that. Um, the, and we're also being CC'd on all of that. I am attending a meeting either on Tuesday or Thursday, I don't know what day with the police chief, me, the town administrator, and two representatives from UMass about the kids coming back. I think it's, I read the article uh, about what Amherst is upset about. <laughs> the off-campus kids are not being held to the same standards as the on-campus kids at UMass as far as having to sign the agreements that they're going to social distance, having to sign the agreements that they're going to wear masks, et cetera. Um, we also, um, they want our input about, or what we should be asking them for about reporting cases, reporting sicknesses, making sure they're reporting to us. Um, so we'll just, uh, you know, I have a feeling as soon as school starts, both with the little kids and with UMass, our active infection cases is going to move. You know, it's got to move at some point just because the kids moving in, people coming in, coming back into our town. Um, they, you know, I can't imagine people not bringing it in. Um, so that's the COVID-19 update. Um, we just have to quickly look at the revolving fund. Uh, can, can I say something, Caitlin? Please do. I'd just like to thank Gina and Steve for their advice and uh, their expertise on this last case. I think it's very important and very valuable. Oh. To and uh, I do appreciate their advice. Thank you, Bruce. Absolutely. That makes two dittos. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I certainly couldn't do that. Cindy? Ma'am? What, um, the revolving fund, um, what do we need to, we, we got the, what did I send you? <laughs> you sent me the, um, gets approved ATM each year. 16,500, what do right. you do with this? Well, this, I'm just giving you that, that information because um, we have a lot of moving things going on with the revolving account. 
So 16.5 is what was approved at the annual town meeting, right. which is um, our, our allotment for Board of Health revolving fund expenses out of that account. So that's every fiscal year we vote that. Right. We've been at 16.5 for a little while because we bumped it up because of some other communicable disease cases we had. Right. Um, An influx once, so we... Right. I remember. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that come out of it. Some salaries for health agents, um, little bits. My Board of Health salary comes out of there for the nine hours I work for you all. Uh, public health nursing stuff comes out of there. Um, right now, COVID-19 stuff is coming out because the other funds we received have been depleted. And hopefully um, anything moving forward with public health nurse expenses will be able to maybe be absolved somewhere else. We might get another CARES package. If right. Congress so I know we, yeah, we got one, but I don't know everything that's um, being allowed out of that one. Right. We also, um, any other expenses we use for it, what, like legal expenses for housing or if we need a laptop for something, if we move with any permitting stuff, whatever that may be, all of that most likely would come out of the um, revolving fund. The Board of Health does have an expense account. It's small. It's like $400, I think, 475 With the town, we usually use that for pool testing and things like that. So I think we're okay, but I wanted to let you all know that we started the new fiscal year with the 165. We have money left over from our prior revolving fund, um, and we are able to maintain that balance, basically. We can't use those funds above the 16.5 unless we have an extenuating circumstance, and then we could go to the Board of Selectmen and ask them to... Even if we have it in our account? No, if we've already used the 16.005, which was appropriate at town meeting... We can use that if we should have some crazy thing happen where we exhaust that 16.5, yes. Because you're only appropriated to use a certain amount. Oh, okay. Which is the 16.5, which is what mm -hmm. we had to do before when we had um, the communicable disease cases. Okay. We thought we were going to be above what, what we were approved for at town meeting, which was less than the 16.5. Okay. Um, so, Bruce, uh, well, what we're going to be doing, um, Ken and Bruce and I, I think we should, you know, we haven't raised any of our feet in, right. when was the last time? I can't. I think it's 09 or something, maybe a little bit since then. Yeah. To get on I mean, the form. It's been quite a while. I've been on here 10 years, I think, and I don't recall raising the fees. Yeah, Yo, you all did it once. Once. All right, so we really need to maybe put it on one of our agendas. Can you, okay. can you, see, what other, can you see what other towns charge? Uh, yes, since? I can. I okay, can. thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot, because we, I think it's kind of. I'm going there right now to see when we raised them last. I, I, it's been quite some time. All right, so, because I think it's about time. It's, you know, it's been since several years, and if, if, if we are going to get this, system, anything computerized, it would be nice to have some money to say, okay, yeah, we can afford it. Correct. Um, I, I agree it with was, you. Yeah, it was 2009. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That was like my first year. So. <laughs> right. All right. Now, we will have to have a public hearing to rate, you know, when you are ready to raise your fees. Yeah. Well, of course, we have to pay for that. The advertising why not but um i will certainly call around and get um the other town's fees well, see how com we're not getting they are. new furniture for the office or anything so it's not no like that's for sure okay i'm trying to make it better <laughs> no no i mean it's not like we're you know no, no. buying us all cars all right so uh and town council invoices, we don't, I don't have those, but, but um, can we, can we put that on the next agenda or do they need to be? 
approved? What, when I no, they don't need to be approved. Um, I've been paying them as we go because I only pay for board of health expenses. Great. Um, and they are uh, directly correlated to a genus work or maybe some other stuff, but usually it's housing. Yeah. That we're using it for, so I can match up what it is. Great. Um, covering. I haven't gotten a bill this month yet. I don't know if we've really used them too much. I mean, Gina called them like yesterday or so, but we haven't used them too much. Not so, this year so far, but we did with uh, 523. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. And we, <laughs> and we did get a lot of that back. We got most of that back. Oh, well, yeah, with the foreclosure? Well, I mean, with exactly. the sale. Well, Correct. we're going to need it for 75 Russell, so exactly. uh, now we're what's, what's, what's the procedure from here on that? What's the appeal process? I, I have to look, I, he, he mentioned section 30, I don't know, Gina, do you, he's gonna, you're muted. You're muted. Who I am? No. No, Gina was. It's in, it's in the back of the housing code. Um, it's, it's to a court of um, something jurisdiction, <laughs> Caitlin, uh, competent jurisdiction. So it'll probably be the housing court. Be housing that will take a while. Country. They could be tied up in this for months. Yep. He, yeah. they, and I, I have a feeling they're not going to want to pay for him. No, and, no. It's cheaper to take out the bathroom and move on. And, and not going to want to, they're going to delay the sale. Well, I don't think they're, I think they're going to lose the sale, which is unfortunate. I, you know, and I, I, but it's not. Hey, this place has been rented out for years. I, I, I can't, you know, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate and it's, it's just what it is. So they have a lot of thinking to do. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at. Um, next board of health meeting. August. I, you guys around on the 24th? I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Steve, Sounds good to me. Steve, you're Sounds, going anywhere, right? The 24th? Yeah. Sounds good because I'm not, I'm too, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I got my computer wherever I go. I know, isn't this great? Interesting? Steve, are you, you're going to, you're bringing your daughter? Um, in college? theory, I will be back. Um, things are so much in flux right now that I would not be at all surprised to hear that in the next two weeks when she's supposed to arrive, they've decided not to Thanks. hold in-person classes. So. I'm really sorry. Uh, is that Steve? Pardon me? Where's that? Uh, Indiana University. Mm. Thanks. Hey, hey, Steve, I got a question for you. Yes. How are you uh, on uh, Title V so far? Uh, are you, are you right on the ball and getting get them done? Uh, oh, yeah. Why? Are you talking about uh, 369? Gee, are you a mind reader? Uh, we just got an email to schedule that this week. Right. Ah, okay. It's a date's been, been offered. It's been offered and accepted the yes. 7th of August. Correct. Okie dokie. That's all. Um, just real quickly, I did pull out the housing code, and it's exactly what we thought. They can appeal to a court of um, competent jurisdiction, so it would be the housing court. Thank you. Yep. That's good. I was afraid it was going to be district court, and the judge is going to be laughing at me. So, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. All right. Um, does anyone want to make a motion to close? Make a motion. So moved, motion made. Uh, I second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. All right, seven twenty six. Thank you guys so much. All right, everybody, on. stay healthy and extended Bruce, family too. Thank you. All healthy. Thank you, Ken, Bruce. Thank you for keeping us on track. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. Everybody.